हेलो वेलकम टू द सेल्फ लर्निंग पॉडकास्ट बाय डॉक्टर सुषमा सिंह लेट अस स्टार्ट डिस्कशन ऑन यूनिट एट इन सॉवरनिटी एंड आवर टॉपिक इज कंसेप्शन ऑफ सॉवरनिटी द अर्लीएस्ट स्कॉलर इन अस्पाउज द डॉक्ट्राइन ऑफ सॉवरनिटी एक्सप्लिसिटली इज द फ्रेंच फिलोसफर एंड थिंकर जीन बॉडी writing at a time when france was riff with religious and civil conflicts bodin like machiavelli asserted that such conflicts could be resolved if it was possible to establish the existence of an unrestricted ruling power competent to overrule all religious and customary authority he then went on to develop this notion into what is regarded as a classical statement of modern theory of sovereignty that there wa- must be within every political community or state a determinant sovereign authority whose powers are decisive and whose powers are recognized by the community as the rightful basis of authority In the six books of a commonwealth Bodin presented sovereignty as the untrammeling and undivided power to make laws law is accordingly nothing else than the command of the sovereign in the exercise of his sovereign power the sovereign power cannot be subject to the commands of the another for it is the sovereign that makes law for the subject bodin did not however advocate or justify despotic rule but rather claimed that the sovereign monarch was constrained by the existence of a higher law in the form of will of god or natural law the sovereignty of temporal rulers was therefore underpinned by divine authority bodin believed that a sovereign authority could only be properly established if body politic was regarded as being composed of both ruler and ruled integrated as previous beliefs and politics had failed to integrate them bodin preoccupied as he was with establishing the necessity of monarchical sovereignty did not focus on the tensions inherent in the idea of a sovereign power comprising both the ruler and the ruled the three most important members of the social contract school hobbes locke and rousseau dwelt on this theme but they did not agree on the nature of sovereign power and the criteria of legitimacy of government and state at the one extreme was hobbes who provided a classical statement about state sovereignty and at the other end was the rousseau who developed the doctrine of popular sovereignty writing at a time of political instability the civil war in england thomas hobbe like bodin sought to establish the necessity of an all powerful sovereign capable of securing the conditions of peaceful and commodious living but he went on to establish a unique relation of authority the relation of sovereign to the subject and a unique political power by arguing that an all powerful sovereign could be established only when the individuals lay down their right to all things hobbes based his sovereignty on a 
covenant of each member of the community with another member to surrender all their rights and powers into the hands of one person or body who thereby becomes the sovereign since the sovereign is not himself a party to the contract it cannot be annulled by those who made it moreover this sovereign had the monopoly and the right to use coercive power because men's ambitions avarice anger and other passions are so strong that covenant without the sword are but words and of no strength to secure a man at all the authority of the sovereign is therefore permanent undivided and ultimately unlimited hobbes conception of sovereignty thus provided a strong justification for state power if hobbes had transferred sovereignty to the state and the rulers jeans jack russo insisted on retaining sovereignty for the people in russo's view sovereignty originates in the people citizens can only be obli- obligated to a system of laws and regulations they have prescribed for themselves with the general good in mind sovereign authority is the people making the rule- rules by which they live in this perspective the ruled should be the rulers the affairs of the state should be integrated into the affair of ordinary citizens russo did not posit any limits on the decisions of the democratic majority as berlin pointed out the community could easily destroy the liberty of the individuals thus it if hobbes placed the state in all an all powerful position with respect to the community russo placed the community in a position to wholly dominate individual citizens john locke transcended the dualism between the ruler and the ruled state and the community by reaffirming the location of sovereignty in the body politic as a whole in this conception of sovereignty the community is the source of sovereignty and the state is the proper instrument for its exercise in locke's scheme the formation of the state does not single the transfer of all subjects rights the state the subject transfers the law making and enforcement rights but the whole process is conditional upon the state adhering to its essential purpose the preservation of life liberty and state thus supreme power remains ultimately with the people who retain the right to dispense with the rulers and even with the existing form of government the idea of russo and locke had a powerful role in replacing dynastic rule with representative governments in europe and later in other parts of the world though the subsequent history of the concept of sovereignty has been marked disputable and complex there is a broad consensus that the sovereignty is the supreme law making and decision making power of a community that the ultimate source of sovereignty is the people that sovereignty is necessarily delegated by the people to the state and exercised on their behalf through the government and that constitutional arrangements are necessary to safeguard these political goods 
from the description of the conceptions of sovereignty, it is clear that while there is a consensus on the need for a determinant authority, there are differences in the nature of the supreme authority, whether it refers to legal authority or unchallengeable political power. There are also differences on its location, whether it lies with the state or with the people. In the following section, we will dwell on these aspects before proceeding to examine external sovereignty or the independent and autonomous status of the sovereign states in international relations. Now, let us wind up the session and take rest. Thank you very much for engaging yourself with the self-learning podcast.